Hello everyone, welcome back to beautiful Montenegro. It is Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Hopefully you are all doing fantastic. Today I'm going to discuss with you a little bit of a topic that has come up with a bunch of clients over, I don't know, you know, months or years or whatever. And this is the subject for people who in particular have maybe newly made you know, what for them is large amounts of money and whatever that number happens to be for you, whether that's, you know, a few million or tens of millions, it's usually, you know, in, uh, I don't know, the low, low millions at least, but sometimes it's a few hundred thousand. It depends on the person, just depending on what level you're at in your life and what makes a difference to you. So we're going to talk about uh, how much you should cash out, when you should cash out, things like this. And I'll give kind of some kind of personal perspectives that I think are worth considering based on what I've seen from a lot of people over many years and hopefully will be useful advice to you. I will contextualize it with what I think is the consequences of taking this sort of approach. But that being said, hopefully it will be useful. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, <laughs> please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. If you'd like help with relocating abroad, getting residencies or citizenships in places like Montenegro or the Caribbean or Dubai or Thailand or Panama or one of these other places, uh, setting up to optimize your global taxes, paying as close to 0% tax legally as possible, uh, please reach out to me. You can book a call calendar.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message to our websites offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. All right. So what is the situation here? Well, imagine that you are somebody who, whether it's through a business, um, either, maybe, possibly the business has just made decent money in terms of cash flow. Maybe you've suddenly had a good win. Maybe you've sold a business. Maybe you've had some good investment. Maybe you, know, you got into something and it went up a lot. Maybe you've got some kind of inheritance. For some reason, you have gone from a position where you might've been doing okay before, but now you have really money that could be good for you for the long term. And so what I typically will use the term as is life changing wealth. That's maybe somewhat of a inaccurate term. It depends on how you want to view it. But what I would say is this is money that could set you up or at least protect you for the rest of your life. And so you've gone from being in a position where maybe before the situation you were in was, you know, you were earning okay money, you were doing fine, maybe you were saving some money, but now you had a big win. And at what point do you decide, okay, I should cash some of this in, I should protect some of it, etc. And here's the context. I have seen a bunch of people who will ride it all the way up and ride it all the way down. And that's not good. There's some other people who will start to make money and then they raise their spending accordingly and suddenly in a few years they're back to pretty much where they started. There's another group of people who will hang on to it and it goes up a lot more. And so let's recognize that what I'm going to advocate here has the consequence that it will reduce your overall upside potential. Okay. So to me, I believe very strongly in a quote that Warren Buffett said once, which is, it's a very foolish thing to risk what you do have and do need for what you don't have and don't need. Okay. So I've mentioned many times, money is far from everything. And if you're in a position where you've maybe made a large amount of money that could really make a big difference for you, it is kind of crazy to gamble it all on the possibility of making a whole bunch more, even if you could win, because if you lose, you may never make this money again. Okay. So I think it's worth understanding that we can be in this situation. I'll give you an example. Uh, many years ago, back in the real estate boom of kind of 2005 to 2008, a friend of mine went from basically zero to $11 million net worth. Okay. Bought a hundred proper, what was it? Uh, I think 60 buildings, 140 doors, a hundred property titles or something like that. Anyway, did very well. And he was the kind of person who actually wasn't really doing it for the money. And he ended up going from that to negative $5 million net worth over the course of the next two years or something by gambling it on trying to do something bigger. And I remember talking to him after a number of years, we went to play squash and he said, I asked him, I was like, do you regret it? And he's like, you know, it took me a long time to admit it, but yes, I do. 
And the reason is I was essentially forced into a five-year retirement, but the difference is I could have done that with $5 million in my pocket. And here I, you know, I remember we went out for uh, lunch one time and he, or well, we went out for a meeting and we were like, hey, you want to grab some food? And he's like, well, it depends. I'm on a very particular diet. I was like, oh yeah, what's that diet? He's like, well, I only eat if somebody else is paying. Um, so not really a great place to be in, but, uh, you know, he, he went through that. And, you know, it's years later. I mean, we're talking about over 10 years later. He has still not made that money back, right? He's a fine, you know, he has a business that he does okay at, etc. but he's never made that back. And I think this is a poignant lesson. Now, to be fair, I also know some other people who uh, made like 150x their money in whatever it was, 2020, 2021. And suddenly they went from a few hundred thousand to, you know, tens of millions. And the reality is, taking the advice that I'm giving here, you wouldn't have made it to that tens of millions, at least in that time period, right? So there's always some psychological holdback, well, what if it goes up? In my opinion, the wise thing to do, and the advice that I give to most people, especially if they're in a situation where their earning potential long-term is uh, not, not gonna be great, right? So maybe you're at the point of retirement, you're getting older, maybe you're in a situation where what you wanna do with your life is something that isn't really high income producing. Maybe it's a little bit different if you know, you're somebody who is likely to make a lot year after year, and so, okay, you lose a million, you'll make a million back. There's probably some level of that for everyone. You know, you lose a thousand, you make a thousand back. You lose ten thousand, whatever the number happens to be for you. But there's a point where it does really make a difference. It's such a big jump in what you've got that I think it is worth protecting it. And so the advice that I always give to people is, let's say that you made four million, right? And a million makes a really big difference in your life. Maybe your normal income is fifty thousand dollars a year. Well, this is twenty years of income. And realistically, that million could produce a passive income for you of $50,000 a year. Take out a million of that and set it on the side, put it in some place safe, invest it in some place that the chances of it being lost are very low, and it can just kind of grow with inflation, maybe provide a bit of income, maybe it compounds, great. But do not risk that portion, because at the end of the day, you know, do you want to end up, do you want your family to end up in a situation where you don't have anything? Again, I have friends who went through that too. I know a guy who was doing very well, he was doing a whole bunch of real estate developments, had, I think it was five different multifamily residential complexes under development at a time, was doing great. Market crashed, had to pull his kids out of private school, you know, all the stuff that they had known and appreciated before, they didn't have. And he looked back on it and if he had put something aside in a trust for his family, he would have taken care of those kids they would have been in a situation where at least they wouldn't have had to worry the same way that they did suddenly. And he would have felt a lot better as a father and as a husband in that regard. And as it happened, everything else was covered, or everything was hit, um, covered by his personal guarantees. And, you know, basically they've lost pretty much everything. Again, he's a resourceful guy. He's going to work hard. He's going to try and build it up. He's probably going to have some successes, but I don't think that it's worth it in most cases. And I think there's a very important lesson, which is preservation is a necessary part of production. If you're always losing what you're building, then you're really not getting ahead. So very, very important to think wisely about these things, to not be greedy. There's like a famous quote, I think it's Confucius or Aristotle or somebody, I think it was Confucius said, he who knows when he has enough is truly wise or is, uh, or is truly rich, something like that. This I think is a useful, Thing to consider and it doesn't mean stop shooting high stop going for more i think you absolutely should you know try and build and make the most of your potential and self-actualize and maximize your life and make the most of whatever it is you can do but having some reserve even if you just think about it from this standpoint if you let's just say you make fifty thousand dollars a year okay let's just say that's the number and let's say you make four million and you lose it all and now you're trying to rebuild with that $50,000 a year. It's so much more difficult than if you're trying to rebuild with a million. Way, way easier. Far, far, far easier to rebuild when you have some resources to do that from. Uh, it's easier to fund businesses. It's easier to have excess disposable income to invest. 
you're in a situation where you have less stress, you can free up more of your time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just a piece of advice that uh, people sometimes when they call me, they ask questions related to this sort of thing. And so I figured I would share kind of my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. Put them in the comments below. Tell me I'm an idiot if I'm wrong. Uh, tell me why. I really appreciate the reasons why more than, uh, more than the opinions. And I will look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.